Hey y'all. So in 2015, AMD teased the world with the Project Quantum at E3. And sadly, they never sold it, so this is how I made my own. The main part of this build uses the ASRock X300W in the STX format. It's so tiny compared to my last case. The kit sets up easily. I'm putting everything together in stock form so we can compare how the new case performs. My design will also use all the RAM slots. For this design, I'm only going to account for NVMe slots, so serial ATA drives might not work. Here I'm just making sure I know all about the hotspots. Take these numbers with a grain of salt. Again, I just wanted a high level understanding of the performance. With the base numbers out of the way, it was time to break down the X300W kit to measure and use the existing parts into the new design. The majority of the breakdown was to gain access to this part. Here's a little 3D printing tip I learned to help release stuck on prints. Just spray IPA on the part when the bed is cooled. Speaking of the 3D prints, if I can get a thousand subscribers, I will share a link in the description below so that you can make your own. So subscribe if you haven't yet. Many of you have asked me to keep my videos shorter, so I'll let you watch my previous videos on how I clean up my prints. I gave these two pieces some light sanding to prepare for painting later. All throughout the case, I'll be using some heat inserts, as usual.
this heat insert might be easy to miss, so don't forget it. The bottom piece won't have inserts in the top tabs, but it will have them at the bottom four corners and the power button location. The top piece will have inserts at the top four corners. Then four more where the radio bracket will go. This is how I stabilize the radiator brackets to make installing the heat inserts easier. It might be hard to tell on camera, but I installed the heat inserts upside down on the first bracket. But it doesn't really matter because it will still work. The non-vented middle piece will have inserts at all tabs. The vented middle piece will have inserts only on the outer tabs as shown. Here I'm making sure to plug and tape up any screw holes before painting. I've made sure both parts are free of dust and give them one last spray of IPA to remove any oils from my hands. Your hands can still have oils even if they look as ashy as mine during this video. Painting the parts is optional, but if you do, make sure you start with some high build primer to hide the uneven surface left by the printing process. I use three coats of primer for both pieces. I use this Krylon Metallic Silver to match the original colors that AMD used for Project Quantum. Just like the primer, I sprayed three coats for each part. To help save space, I removed the rubber vibration dampeners from the fan. This is how the fan attaches to the radiator bracket. You do this for both sides. This radiator was used in the build because you can take it apart to reduce the overall size. I'm going to use different tubes that won't work with these parts, so they can go. Luckily I had these 60mm spanners that are meant for bicycle repair. You can use the original screws from the radiator to attach everything together. I calculated the length of the hose needed for this build at 150 millimeters on both sides. Depending on the tubing you use, it might be different.
To help slide on the tubing, I am using a mixture of distilled water and a few drops of dish soap. I'm a huge fan of stretching smaller diameter tubing over barbs, since they make a secure seal and help create less restriction in the loop. I use these clamps since they are very low profile and really grab on. I'm using this alpha cool pump and block combo that has RGB to help match the original AMD Project Quantum lighting. You can opt for the non-RGB version too if you like. The Alpha Cool has a fill port that I'm extending to allow easier filling and bleeding. Follow this sequence to begin putting the case together. The first parts that go in are the Wi-Fi antenna. You'll be using the original hardware. You don't need to screw it in yet, but orient the radiator like so, so we can attach it to the pump block next. Make sure to use the soap and water from before to get these barbs in. It's a tight fit and lubing always helps. Slide these clamps over the tube to avoid frustration later on. The power button goes in before attaching the stock power switch from the X300W kit. I only put biocide and distilled water in my loops, but you can use whatever coolant you want. To fill and bleed the system, I'm using a spare power supply with a jumper and a Molex to fan connector in order to power just the pump and block combo. You never want to run any pump dry, so make sure your power supply is off before connecting everything. Here is some free footage of my feet operating the power bar switch. I like to move the PC around in order to speed up the bleeding process. In my honest opinion, small form factor PCs are easier to bleed than larger PCs because of this. I use my feet to quickly shut off the pump if it ever sucks air in. I filled, bled, and leak tested the system for over 24 hours. I now reinstall the Wi-Fi card and NVMe drive. As usual, make sure that the CPU is cleaned and that you have removed the plastic film from the bottom of the block combo before installing.
taping down the serial ATA cable that will be used to power the RGB lights from the pump and the fan. You do have to modify the RGB controller I'm using to work with the X300W kit. Then you simply slide the motherboard in place like shown. No, I'll be honest, it took me over an hour to finally get the cables and tubes to go in without pinching or hitting the fan. My advice is just to be patient. By the way, if you don't want to water cool, or you just gave up, the stock heatsink that comes with the X300W will also fit. You'll be using standoffs to attach the motherboard to the case. You can see hole cutouts on the bottom and they allow air to pass over the backside NVMe and VRM area. Screws go through the panel and into the standoffs. I use some stick-on feet as well. These are the four screws that hold the radiator bracket in place. Attach the RGB controller to the wires from your fan and the pump block combo. Tidy things up so that the top panel can go in easily. Like painting the middle pieces, this next step is optional. I used some mounting putty to seal off the AMD logo so that I could add in some glow-in-the-dark red nail polish. You need sun or a UV lamp to harden the nail polish. I'm just playing with the glow in the dark here. I didn't have any black tapered head screws, so I painted the silver screws with some black acrylic paint. Some details were lost for the front I.O., so I cut out a decal to hide the defects. This is optional, of course. With everything put together, and thankfully working, I ran some tests to see how things have changed from the stock configuration. From high level, things ran cooler and much quieter. The CPU seemed to like the cooler temperatures, but the GPU was virtually unaffected. All in all, I am proud of how this project turned out. It's not as exotic as the real AMD Project Quantum, but I still think we made something really neat here. Again, if you want the STLs for this project, make sure you are subscribed and also like the video. Once I get over a thousand subscribers on this channel, I will post a link for you to download the project for free. Now enjoy the rest of the hero shots. If you stuck around this long, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. Your time is valuable and it makes me really happy that you made time to check out my project. I still have more case ideas and I have time to build them, so keep an eye out for the next one. Thanks for watching.